Society of Mechanical Engineers, which is a national organization, and we have our own branch here at the University of Houston. My name is Sarah Hijazi. I'm a third year student, mechanical engineering student. My name is Maggie Forrest, and I'm also a third year mechanical engineering student. And I'm Elizabeth Sandoval, currently a senior fourth year mechanical engineering student. So today we're actually going to be creating a launcher, which is going to demonstrate uh, certain topics within mechanical engineering to show you guys what a mechanical engineer does and what, what it looks like. In the universe, there are many different forms of energy. And you also may have heard that we can't create energy and we can't destroy energy. What does that mean, Maggie? I don't get it. Uh, this means that I can't just pull energy out of thin air. I have to take energy from one source and turn it into another kind of energy to accomplish something that I need to do. For example, the food that we eat is a form of stored energy that we use to give us the energy to move and work. And in today's activity, we will actually be focusing in mechanical energy. It is one form of energy that we study a lot as mechanical engineers. Um, this mechanical energy can be further broken down into potential and kinetic energy. Uh, easy demonstration of uh, the vice versa relationship with potential and kinetic energy is via a pendulum. So here we have a string attached to a ping pong ball. So as potential energy increases, kinetic energy decreases. What this means is potential energy is how much stored energy is in the ping pong ball based off of how far away it is from the ground. As we hold it pretty high up, there's a lot of potential energy stored. But as we let it go and we allow it to go closer to the ground, move closer to the ground, it will increase its kinetic energy because it will be moving and it will the potential energy will decrease because it will be closer to the ground. So we will let it go and it is now moving closer to the ground. So potential energy can actually be broken down into two types of energies which are gravitational and elastic. So gravitational energy is basically based on height and position above, above the earth. So what that means is the higher that you are, the more that gravity is pulling you towards the earth. So therefore you have a lot of stored energy in you. So when you're on an elevator or on a roller coaster, you have a lot of potential energy in your system. Now, we also have spring or elastic energy, which is found in things like springs or uh, rubber bands. So right now this rubber band has no energy, but when I stretch it, it's in tension and it has a lot of energy because all it wants to do is snap back. So when I stretch it, it has a lot of elastic energy. Um, and this is also seen in springs when we compress them or when we stretch them out. Another form of energy is called kinetic energy. And this is based on how fast something is moving. So the faster something is moving, the more kinetic energy uh, that object has. Um, today our demonstration is gonna show you these three kinds of energy. Um, potential energy from gravity and from elastic and kinetic energy um, as a demonstration of mechanical energy. Today we're gonna demonstrate how we can turn these three kinds of energy, gravitational, elastic, and kinetic, into mechanical energy. Hey there, so we're just gonna showcase the initial prototype that we had made. Here it is, as you can see, um, it uses the same concepts as the build of the girls, but it is not as efficient as their build. And uh, some of the reasons as to why it isn't as efficient is because the, the launcher portion that's on the inside is actually much shorter, which doesn't allow you to pull it as far back as the girls design to stretch the rubber bands and uh, introduce more elastic potential energy. Another factor as well is that the girls has two rubber bands, which creates twice the amount of uh, possible potential energy that you can store in the bands. Last but not least, the, the part where you hold it Right, the, um, the resistance the material has for you to hold it and not squish in is very little as compared to the girls, which has two. That allows for you to be able to pull it back and not hold it. You see it's right there like I'm holding it because I, I don't have the, it doesn't have the, the material doesn't have the resistance for you to be able to hold it in place. Uh, and as you can see, I'll give you a demonstration of how inefficient this design was. It's not, it's not very far. All right, so we're just gonna go in a little more detail on how the improvements affect the performance of the device. Uh, 
when in, when we were speaking of the barrel, if it was longer, or this short barrel, just to, to, to speak of this one, when you pull it out, it won't really, it's very hard to make sure that it goes straight. So you want to be able to have the, the barrel be able to be constrained to where it's gonna be, where its motion needs to be. So that's one of the things about making it longer. The other thing too as well, as I mentioned before, was allowing the rubber bands to be able to stretch more to store more potential energy. The next thing you could do with the barrel is maybe change the material to a much sturdier material so it could be much easier to handle and to use. So the problem with this design is whenever you pull the stick backwards, you want to get as much force as you can so the ball will go the furthest distance. Unfortunately, as you can see, you're only allowed to stretch back as far as this goes in here. If it stretches outwards, it'll just mess up and it won't go through the barrel. So in order to get more distance uh, for your pullback, you will have to extend this barrel so this can go further, but still be inside of here so you get more distance. Uh, so that's one of the changes that you could make for this uh, device. So today we're gonna make a lawn shirt that looks something like this. Um, so first you need a clean working space. Make sure you have a nice, open area and you need to collect all your materials so that you're organized and you have everything at the ready. To start you need four rubber bands, preferably the thicker ones, a hole punch, a rod, but you can also use a pencil, a small pencil, um, a cardboard paper roll, a paper towel roll, scissors, duct tape, your choice of a ping pong ball or a cotton ball, and that's all. The first step of the build is to cut your cardboard paper towel roll into three portions. You'll need one piece that is about an inch wide and you need one piece that is a little bit larger than the other piece. You can see the difference in the length of the two pieces here. The second step is to take the largest paper towel roll and cut it down the middle. After we've cut it, we're gonna roll it to reduce the diameter of the tube so that it has a smaller diameter than the outer tube. Okay. Now that we've cut our paper towel roll, we're going to secure the smaller diameter with a piece of tape on both ends of the tube. Having a partner to help you makes things go a lot faster. Roll it up. Now we're going to secure the other end of the tube. Now that our partner, my partner and I have both been secured, we're going to take a hole punch, a single hole punch, and cut two holes. And I'm going to cut my other hole directly on the opposite side. I'm going to take my rod or my short or my short pencil and put it through each ends of the holes I punched with the hole punch. Now I'll set that aside and create the outer part of my launcher. I take my scissors and I make four cuts two cuts on one side of my tube and then two more cuts directly opposite of the first two cuts on the other side of the tube. Now I create the main part of my launcher with the rubber band. The rubber band is going to fit inside of the two cuts that I made. So I have the long side on the outside of the tube. And then I'm going to add a second rubber band on top of that first rubber band. Also with the long side of the rubber band outside of the tube. 
Now we're going to secure the rubber bands and reinforce the tube with the piece of tape on both sides where the rubber bands are. So we've held the rubber bands down and we've secured them to the tube and we'll repeat that on the other side. Make sure that your tape is really secure to keep the rubber bands from flying off of the device. You're going to hold your launcher from the end that's opposite of the rubber bands. So to reinforce that and make it easier to grip, you're gonna take the one inch piece of cardboard and wrap it around the end of the launcher that you'll be holding it on and secure it with some more tape. All that's left to do now is assemble it. So um, you just gotta take this piece, the one with the rod, and put it on the end that doesn't have the rubber bands. And attach your rubber bands to your pencil or your rod, kind of like this. And that's it. You got your launcher. So for this launcher, we have, like we spoke earlier, a couple of different types of energy. First, we have our elastic energy in our rubber bands, and they're already stretched out. So there's already a lot of potential energy in these bands. But once we pull the sticks back a little bit, we have even more because it's getting stretched. But we also have potential energy with our, um, with our angling. And because the ball is a, off the ground by a little bit, it does have some stored energy because of its height. And it'll also have potential energy because of the elastic rubber bands. Now, when we do release our launcher, that energy will transform into kinetic energy because the ball will actually fly. So it actually has movement now and therefore it becomes kinetic energy. So here we have our launcher and when we pull back our stick, we can place our ball in there. And we have the comparison of two. So this is our original one, the first one, and this is the improved design. Now, when we pull back the sticks, we have more we have potential energy from our elastic bands, and we also have potential energy from the height from the bottom, so from the from the height to the ground. Now, when we launch them, we will have kinetic energy. Now, as you can see, the improved design went a lot further compared to the original design.